Hello guys, so this is the fourth video. So we're going to discuss about factors affecting chemical equilibrium, which is the Chatelier principles. So chemical equilibrium presents a balance between the four reverse reactions. So variables that can control experimentally are concentration, pressure, volume, and temperature. So here we will examine on how each of these variables are affect a reacting system at equilibrium. So a general rule that helps us to predict the direction in which an equilibrium react will move when the changes of concentration, pressure, volume, and temperature is known as Lee Chatelier principle. So Lee Chatelier principle stated that if an external stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system is adjusted in such way that a stress is partially offset as the system reaches the new equilibrium positions. So what is actually a position of equilibrium? So in general, through the equilibrium constant, because equilibrium constant is directly proportional to the product, yet inversely proportional to the reactants. So in other words, to have high amount of equilibrium constant, so you have more product than the reactant, and if the equilibrium constant is slow, that means you have more reactant than the product. So making use of examples, we shall discuss the equilibrium position. So for example, equilibrium constant of the formation of hydrogen iodide from molecular hydrogen and iodine in gas phase are given below. So H2 plus I2 gives 2 HI, Kc is 54.3 at 430 degrees Celsius. So now, uh, supposedly in an experiment, we placed 0.243 mole of hydrogen, 0.146 mole of iodine, and 1.98 mole of hydrogen iodide all in one liter container at 430. 30 degrees Celsius. So inserting the starting concentration in equilibrium is expressed as equilibrium quotient QC. Where equilibrium quotient in uh, equilibrium quotient in here is the value obtained by substituting the initial concentration into the equilibrium constant expressed in order to determine the position of equilibrium compared to KC. Now back to here. So we uh, expression of QC is basically the same with the expression of KC where HI square is equals to H2 plus I2. So in here initially you have 1.98 moles of hydrogen iodide square over 0.243 mole of the hydrogen and 0.146 of the iodine. So press the calculator and the QC is equals to 111. So when the value of KC is large compared to QC. So in other words, we, we, inside the system now, we have more product than the reactant. So uh, at this moment, we say that the system has not yet achieved equilibrium and it will shift accordingly. So let's say, what will happens if QC varies with KC? So today, if the value of QC is smaller than KC, so when the QC is smaller than KC, that means inside the initial system, we have the product which is low or the reactant which is high. So the ratio of initial concentration of product is too small. So to reach equilibrium, reactant must be converted to some product. So the system proceeds from the left to the right equation, which is consuming the reactant and form product to reach equilibrium. So at this moment, we describe it as equilibrium shift to the right. However, if QC is equal to KC, so we, have, we say that the system has achieved equilibrium, therefore equilibrium position will remain unchanged. However, if QC is greater than KC, that means in terms of product over a reactant, so the product is far greater. Or in another word, the ratio of the initial concentration of product is too large. So to reach equilibrium, product must be converted to reactants. So the system proceeds from the right to the left of equation, in another word, consuming product by forming reactants to reach equilibrium. So at this moment, we describe that equilibrium shift to the left. So we're going to study the factors that affect the position of equilibrium. So a change, uh, as mentioned just now, there is, we are going to discuss by using the factors of concentration, the factors of the pressure, and also the factors of temperature. So changing the concentration of one or more product of the reactant or product uh, in a reaction disturbs the original equilibrium, but the value of Kc and Kp will remain the same while the system changes until equilibrium is re-established. According to Lee Chatelier principle, position of equilibrium will change by the following changes. We say that equilibrium will shift to the right if concentration of the reactant increase or the concentration of the product decrease. We say that equilibrium will shift to the left if the concentration of the reactant decrease or the concentration of the product increase. So let's take a look at the examples in here. So now if you have examples of 2NO plus O2 give 2NO2, so initially when we have some NO react with O2, so some NO2 will start to form. So as time passes, concentration of NO and O2 decrease, 
whereas concentration of NO2 increase until the system has achieved the equilibrium when the concentration of NO, NO, uh, NOO2 and NO2 has achieved a constants. So at this moment, we say that equilibrium, has, uh, equilibrium is established in here. So I'm going to place it as Kc1. However, this system is now disturbed by adding some nitrogen monoxide. So when the concentration, when some mono nitrogen monoxide is added, concentration of nitrogen monoxide increase. So at this moment, system is disturbed. So since the concentration of the reactant increase, according to Lee Chatelier principle, equilibrium will shift to the positions in order to counteract to the uh, x that we increase by increase the concentration of the NO just now. So in another word, in order to reduce the NO, equilibrium will shift to the right. So what will happen when equilibrium shifts to the right? So you will notice that concentration of NO2 will increase, whereas concentration of NO and O2 will decrease until a new equilibrium is re-established. So the equilibrium is re-established. So therefore we have here Kc2. So note here, concentration will not affect the uh, equilibrium constant. Therefore, Kc1 in here is still equal to the Kc2. So therefore, changing the concentration will only shift the position of equilibrium but will not affect the pro the positions uh, will not affect the equilibrium constant of the reactions. So here are a few more examples that I can show you by the changes of the concentration. For example, if hydrogen react with iodine to form hydrogen iodide, substance alter, concentration of hydrogen increase, so where will equilibrium shift to? Equilibrium will shift to the right. So what will happen to the concentration of iodine and hydrogen iodide? So concentration of iodine decrease, hydrogen iodide increase. What about the next one? 2 Fe3 plus plus 2 I minus give to Fe2 plus plus I2. Substance alter, concentration of Fe2 plus decrease. So the concentration of Fe2 plus decrease, so we say that equilibrium will also shift to the right. So at this moment, concentration of Fe3 plus decrease, or the concentration of the I2 increase. Next example, what happens if the concentration of the hydrogen decrease? So when concentration of hydrogen increase, according to the Lee-Chatelier principle, equilibrium will shift to the left. So at the moment, N2 increase, while the NH3 decrease. Fourth example, if you have 2 SO2 plus O2 give to SO3, concentration of SO3 increase. So when concentration of SO3, which is the uh, reactant increase, a uh, product increase, so equilibrium will shift to the uh, equilibrium will shift to the left to decrease the concentration of the product. So concentration of SO2 and O2, both of them will increase. Example 5. 2NO2O5 give 4NO2 plus O2. Concentration of NO2 increase. So when concentration of NO2 increase, equilibrium will then shift to the left. So equilibrium shift to the left, N2O5 increase, O2 decrease. Last but not least, N2O4 gives to NO2, concentration of NO2 decrease. So concentration of NO2 decrease, equilibrium will shift to the right. So therefore, concentration of N2O4 will also decrease. So this is how Lee Chatelier principle affects the position of equilibrium by using the factors of concentration. Next, we are going to have a look by the factors of pressure. So changing in pressure have significant effects only in equilibrium system with gaseous component. So pressure can change uh, can occur in three ways. Number one, changing the concentration of gaseous component. Number two, adding inert gas. And number three, changing the volume of the reaction vessels. So using using ideal gas equation, the relationship between pressure of the gas and concentration is deduced below. So when we have PV equals to nRT, so P is equals to N over VRT, so N over V is basically equals to concentration. So therefore that is why we say that when the concentration of when the pressure increases, uh, when the pressure changes, concentration of the system will also change. Based on the Chatelier principle, the changes of the pressure will cause the following changes to the chemical equilibrium. We say that 
if the concentration uh, if the concentration of the system increase equilibrium will respond to shift to the positions which to increase to decrease the number of pressure so therefore you have to decrease total number of mole of gases so equilibrium will shift to the position with less total mole of gas however if the pressure of the system decrease so now as the uh, pressure has decreased so the uh, system will act to increase back the pressure so therefore equilibrium will shift to the position of the equilibrium with more total mole of gas so as the third number of mole increase the pressure will also increase however if both sides of the chemical reaction have the same total mole of gas so equilibrium will not respond regardless of the changes in the pressure of the system so example, uh, when nitrogen gas is at, uh, we act with hydrogen gas to form ammonia, where the equation is expressed as 3H2 plus N2 give to NH3. So what will happen when the pressure of the system increase? So according to the Lee-Chandelier principle, uh, equilibrium will shift the less total mole of gas to decrease the pressure. So from the equation above, uh, equilibrium will say shift to the right. Why? Since right mole has less total mole. As a result, concentration of the reactant decrease, whereas the concentration of the product increase. So therefore, N2 decrease, H2 decrease, and H3 increase. However, equilibrium constant Kc and Kp for the reaction will remain a change since it only affects the concentration of the substances involved. Next, when a gaseous inert gas is added to the equilibrium, and the gas does not react with other gases in the equilibrium, the system will also respond in order to counteract the changes to the equilibrium. Adding in a gas towards equilibrium will decrease the partial pressure of the mixture, provided that the total pressure remains constant, and causing equilibrium to shift to the position with more total mole of gas. However, if both sides have the same total mole of changes of gases, there will be no changes in equilibrium. When equilibrium is disturbed by adding inert gas under constant volume, so the following changes might occur. So, total number of gaseous molecules increase, total pressure of the system increase, partial pressure of the gases remain unchanged. So therefore, adding inert gas under constant volume will not change the position of equilibrium, hence composition of the equilibrium mixture. So this is the differences when, change, when adding inert gas under constant pressure and also constant volume. So we're going to have to look at a few examples by uh, using uh, examples to show how do you apply the Italy Chandelier principle in the changes of pressure. So first example, when 2 SO2 plus O2 give 2 SO3, factors of the pressure increase. So since here has 2 mole, here has 3 mole, so pressure increase will cause equilibrium shift to the right. So as the pressure shift to the right, concentrations of FO2 decrease concentration of SO3 increase. Next, 4NH3 plus 5O2 give 4NO2 plus 6H2O. Factors alter, pressure decrease. So when pressure decrease, equilibrium will shift to the position with more total mole of gas. So since here, total mole in here is 9 mole, whereas total mole in here is 10 mole, so therefore, equilibrium will shift to the right. So. Uh, what will happen to the concentration of NH3? Concentration of NH3 decrease, the concentration of NO increase. Next, CO3, uh, CO plus SO3 gives CO2 plus SO2. Pressure decrease. So since the both of them has the same total mole of gases, so therefore there will be no changes of equilibrium, therefore concentration of CO and SO3 does not change. In a heterogeneous equilibria, where CaCO3 gives CaO plus CO2, factors alter, pressure increase. So when the pressure increase, equilibrium will shift to the less total mole of gas. Therefore, here is 0, here is 1, so equilibrium shift to the left. As a result, concentration of CO2 decrease. And finally, in here, we have volume increase. So if volume increase, what we, uh, when volume increase, according to Boyle's law, this will cause the pressure to decrease. So if pressure decreases, according to the Chatelier principle, equilibrium will shift the direction with more total mole of gas. So since here has 2, here has 5, equilibrium will shift to the right. So N2O5 will decrease, NO will increase. 
Next, we have PCL5 give PCL3 plus CL2 factor after volume decrease. So if volume decrease, according to Boyle's law, pressure will increase. So when pressure increase, equilibrium will shift to the position with less total volume of gas. So here you have 1, here you have 2, therefore equilibrium will shift to the left. So when equilibrium shift to the left, concentration of PCL5 increase when concentration of PCL3 decrease. So what, hap what about adding neon under constant pressure? So adding neon under constant pressure will cause equilibrium to shift to the position with more to the mole of gas. So therefore, equilibrium shift to the right. So PCL5 decrease, PCL3 increase. If adding argon under constant pressure, will cause equilibrium to shift to the left, since left side has more to the mole of gas. So H2 increase, H2O decrease. And finally, since both sides have the same mole, adding krypton will no cause the reaction to no change. Therefore, concentration of I2 and HI remain unchanged. So there I have for you the first two factors of the Lee Chatelier principle. So next we are going to uh, we are going to continue our video later with the factors of temperature. Thank you.